Hello, and welcome to part two in my guide on how you can build and assemble your own mostly 3D printable open source CNC drawing machine. In this video, I'll go over the software and settings used on the Arduino Uno to run the machine, as well as a short demonstration on how you can create your own G-code for your own machine. First, and by request, here's some more information about the CNC machine and how it works. And then shortly afterwards, we'll dive into the software side of things. The X axis, the one which runs side to side, is controlled by this stepper motor and a timing belt. In a similar fashion, the Y axis, which goes forward and backwards, is controlled by the stepper motor underneath the platform. The Z axis, which is the one that moves the pen up and down, is controlled by a small servo connected via a timing belt. The finger dials on the front make it very easy to change the pen without the need for any tools. The Arduino and other electronics for this project are housed in this container which is kept cool by a small fan. The addition of two ports makes it very easy to pack up or move your project elsewhere. If you haven't yet seen part one of this video series, which covers the 3D printing and assembly of the machine, then you can find the link to that video up here in the corner. I've also put one in the description below. Now, this video is going to be a little bit more wordier than mine usually are. This is because I'm going to endeavor to show you how to test your machine as we go through each step. This will help you spot any problems before they get buried too deep, and it'll give you a better understanding of how exactly your machine works. The first thing that we will need to do is upload Gerbil to our Arduino. Gerbil, which can be pronounced as Gerbil, Gerbil, Garbel, or even GRBL, is some free open source software which is used to control CNC machines. It's ideal for our project. However, it is designed to control machines which have a spindle or laser attached to their heads. We will be using a servo in our machine to move our pen up and down. So we're going to run a modified version of this software. This is called MeGerbil. You can find a link to download this software and any of the other software that I talk about during this video in the description below. Download the Gerbil Me folder, unzip it, and then copy it into your Arduino's library folder. On a Mac, this is usually users slash your name slash documents slash Arduino slash libraries. And on a Windows, is usually something like my documents slash Arduino slash libraries. Open the Arduino IDE, again, links to download this are in the description, and in the menu, go file, examples, gerbil me, gerbil upload. Connect your Arduino to your computer using a USB cable. Select the Arduino Uno board type in the tools menu and the correct port for your Arduino and upload the sketch. Once the upload is complete, you can open the serial monitor and set the board rate to 115200. Sending two dollar signs should return Gerbil's current settings. To begin with, we will upload a set of configuration settings for the design as I have built here and have shown you in the first video. We will use this to check that the motors work properly and that our limit switches are responding as they should as well. I have put a link down in the description to where you can get a copy of these configuration files. Copy and paste the settings line by line into the Arduino serial monitor and they will automatically apply themselves to your garble installation. You can verify this by sending the double dollar signs again to see the current configuration which should be different to what we saw earlier. As a quick side note, the configuration for Gerbil is saved to some non-volatile memory on board our Arduino. This means that it will be remembered when we power off our Arduino and power it back on later. So don't worry about trying to reload your configuration every time you switch your machine on again. Before we begin testing the hardware, Gently and slowly manually move the CNC machine so that the head is roughly in the center of the expected working area. 
as we have some homing switches configured on our CNC machine, when we first switch it on, it will start up in an alarm state. This is because it cannot be sure at the moment where its head is in relation to the rest of the machine. To resolve this, we will trigger a homing sequence which will move both the X and Y axes to their very ends until they make contact with the limit switches. These two switches are located here and here. We will issue the homing command to our Arduino in a moment and what we want to see happen is the axis to move all the way to the left and all the way to the bottom left corner of our drawing area until it engages those two contact switches. At this point, it will perform a small bounce on the two contact switches to improve its accuracy and then we will read OK in the serial monitor. Be prepared to disconnect the power if your machine does anything other than this. If it does, recommend going back to the part one video and checking your work, paying attention to the electronic connections so far. You can also take a look at my website for some FAQs on this project's page to fix some of the most common faults you might come across. If it has worked just fine though, we'll move on to testing the servo's ability to move the pen up and down in its slider. To do this, issue the command M3S90 followed by M5. The servo should pull on the timing belt and raise the slider when M3S90 is issued. This should have lifted the pen slider upwards very near to the end of its travel and our servo should not be continually straining to try and pull it any further. If it is, refit the timing belt inside the 3D printed arm on our servo, giving it a little bit more slack. As we may have jogged the position of the machine since issuing the first homing command, we issued the $H, and then once homed, issue G92X0Y0. This tells the machine that wherever it is now should be known as the origin by setting its current location as zero on both the X and Y axis. If you would like to move both the X and Y axis manually using Garble, then this is a great way to test how everything is working so far. To do this, we can manually issue the following command. G1, X10, Y50, F2000. Let's break this down. G1 tells it to move in a linear fashion, that is in a straight line. The number following X and Y are the coordinates from the origin in millimeters. And the number after F, which stands for feed rate, tells the machine just how fast to move. Now that we know that's working fine, we can set our computer up to automatically feed our Arduino G-code lines so that it's able to draw a much more detailed drawing than we could by issuing commands ourselves. The G-code sender which we will use is a web application called Chili Pepper. Head on over to its website, chilipepper.com slash gerbil. I'd recommend using Google Chrome for this. The first thing which we will need to do for Chili Pepper is install a JSON server onto your computer. This is just a small program which helps your web browser connect to your Arduino via the USB port. To do this, follow the download serial port JSON server link in the lower right and download and install the correct version for your operating system. Ensure your Arduino is plugged into your PC before starting the program. Go back to the Chili Pepper window. Reload the serial port list with this button and you should now see your Arduino. Select Garble from the drop down list and check that the serial speed is at 115200 and then check the box that's left to select it as an output. Drop open the axis window if it's not already expanded and press home axis to check that it is correctly connected and then press zero out to reset the coordinates. The home axis button issues the same $H command that we used earlier to start the homing sequence on our Gerbil machine. The zero out button also uses the same G92X0Y0 command that we also used earlier. Before we add pen and paper to our machine, it would be a good idea to do a dry run first. To load the G code file, diym-test.gcode, which is linked to in the description below, 
just drag and drop the file onto the center preview area of Chili Pepper. Then press the play button on the left hand side to begin streaming these instructions over to your Arduino. If all has gone well, then we can tape down some paper and add a pen to our machine to make our first drawing. To install the pen at the correct height, we'll need to ensure that the slider is raised. If yours is not currently, then this can be achieved by issuing the command M3S90. Insert the pen so that the nib is about 3 to 5 millimeters above the surface when you tighten the two thumb screws to hold it in place. Home and zero out the axis again just in case we jog the arm and then press play. Now that that's a success, the next thing to do is to show you how you can create your own G-code from your own drawings for your machine. For this, you'll need to download version 0.48.5 of Inkscape. This is free and there's a link to it down below. After you have finished downloading and installing it, we can then add an extension to it called Megarble to help turn our drawings into G-code which our machine understands. Download the files linked below again, unzip it, and then copy the four files inside to c slash program files 86 slash inkscape slash share slash extensions overwriting anything if a warning dialog box appears we can start inkscape and set the size of our drawing area by going to file document properties set the default units to millimeters and in the custom size, set the units to millimeters again, and then enter a width of 225 and height of 250. A good first drawing to show the basics would be to draw a box about the size of our working area and use a Sharpie to mark this out onto the baseboard for reference in the future. Click the box tool and draw a box just slightly smaller than the entire drawing area. Change the fill color to nothing by left clicking here and hold down shift and click black to set the stroke color of the border. In my experience, a Sharpie fine line draws a line about 0.8 millimeters thick. So we'll also set that so that we can see a better representation of the drawing on our screen. To do that, open the stroke and fill window by clicking this icon or pressing shift control F on your keyboard. Click stroke style and enter 0.8 millimeters. Only strokes get converted into G-code for our machine to draw with this plugin. So we need to select the box and then go to Path, Object to Path. To export this as G-code, we simply click Extensions and MeGerbil Z-Axis Servo Controller. For your first time, we will need to change a few of the values as shown. Servo up to M5, Servo down to M3. X axis speed 10,000, Y axis speed 4,000, angle for servo to 90, a delay of 0.2. This is the path to where you want to save the encoded file. And this, well, it's the file name. We can then home our axis on Chili Pepper. zero out the coordinates, drag and drop the G code onto the main chili pepper window and then press play to do a dry run first. If the dry run went well then you can add a sharpie and play the same code again.
now we have the boundaries of our CNC machine clearly marked out for us. To create a block of color in these drawings, in Inkscape, I created a pattern of lines spaced closely together. This is how I created the blocks of color used in my Avengers character. You can now go ahead and experiment with some different types of mediums. As some examples, here's some Sharpie pens on some paper, the same Sharpie pens on the back of a white silicon iPhone case, and some edible ink pens onto a sheet of icing. I have created a set of machine-ready G-code drawings for you to draw on your machine. To help financially support this channel, you can download them in exchange for a small donation by following the link in the description of this video. You can also support my channel by becoming a patron, just the same as these lovely people here have. Thank you to your support if you're watching, and if you become a new patron of mine, thank you too. If you have any problems with your machine, please don't forget to check my website where you'll find an FAQ section with some answers to the most common problems. If you know anybody else who might be interested in building one of these for themselves, please go ahead and share this project with them. Otherwise, until next time, ciao for now.